So today's session is really looking at something um, that, that everyone will be familiar with, um, which is the, the sort of license scope rules in, in, in software license agreements, and really just showing the market dynamics around this, um, uh, uh, and particularly the uh, extent to which software vendors are now going after customers um, for software over deployment. We're going to try and show how that's a sort of growing risk to the business relationship. So we're all used to the good old days um, when the license scope clause and the restrictions about uh, uh, no reverse engineering, uh, no third party use, uh, no transfer of the software um, were generally well understood, a bit like the boilerplate at the end of the contract, the license scope clause at the start um, was something that you sort of had a quick look through, checked it was all right, um, and then moved on. Um, now, that, those times are changing, and it was for, for three reasons. Um, commercially, software vendors are becoming increasingly assertive about over-deployment, and legally, they're starting to have success in enforcing their contracts in the courts, um, and technically, new software deployment techniques uh, means that software is capable of interacting much more broadly, much more widely, and at many more iterations. So, We'll be going through this in a little bit more detail, but you've got a number of things here on the slide. Um, early adoption, mainstream, and mature. So you've got robotic process automation, smart contracts, and uh, really at the early stage, AI is starting to get more mainstream. Service-oriented architecture and, and the cloud and XAAS, anything as a service, um, are, 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 are in the mainstream now, and you have APIs and OSS, open source, uh, uh, which are mature. And we'll, we'll be coming back after the break and looking at these in a little bit more detail. Um, there are risks uh, for, 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 for software licenses in flight, that are, that, that where the contracts are current. Um, and, and what we've seen with clients is that over deployment risks disputes, um, it risks having to pay extra fees. Uh, uh, clients have this rather unattractive choice between taking out the software, which incurs cost, or uh, uh, paying the extra license fees that the software vendor is, is asking for, neither of which is particularly satisfactory. And to get there, there's quite a lot of management time, quite a lot of legal time, quite a lot of, quite a lot of technical time. So uh, software over deployment is, is reasonably inefficient. <coughs> um, and the answer is sort of a need for clear, concise, future-proofed license scope clauses. Um, and the mantra from today is align the use case to the license scope through the contract life cycle. So we'll, we'll, we'll be coming back to that. So, and how do you get there? Um, it, it's obviously being more uh, cognizant of what you're doing when the contract starts. Um, and we're seeing more, more, more clients starting to look at structured software asset management, so software systems to monitor how they're using the software. Um, and from the vendor side, this, this isn't ideal as well. So what, what we're seeing them doing increasingly is communicating better what their licensing policies are um, and adopting this sort of trust but verify largely through the audit, each of which we'll, 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 we'll be looking at. So the, the first point is that, that commercially we're seeing software vendors becoming very much more assertive and we'll see this in, 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 in Deirdre's segment. Um, uh, uh, I, I think that part of it is that you know, growth is harder to come by. People are moving from the sort of perpetual license model to the sort of subscription service-based model. Um, and and, and the, 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 the going harder after under licensing or non-licensing um, is a good way of, of, of making the revenue growth that they want for their shareholders. So how does this happen? Um, uh, uh, I'm not, We've had a number of cases with Oracle Java um, where the sort of backdrop is when pre-takeover pre uh, in, in 2010, um, some had a very uh, 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 relaxed licensing policy about, about Java. They didn't really mind how it was used so long as it was used. So they had this license agreement that they didn't really enforce. Um, and basically, people were more or less free to write their Java applications and then to use the Java runtime environment under the particular license that they have, the binary code license agreement. 
Um, and, and, and that was all fine and dandy. Oracle bought Sun in 2010, as you'll recall, and they have become much, much more restrictive and much, much more assertive. So if, if you've had the, 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 the delight of looking through the Java binary code license agreement, it's, it's very restrictive. It's quite obscure. It's very hard to say exactly what, 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 see, see what, what it means. Um, but we have experience now of Oracle going after clients saying, you know, we've noticed that you're advertising in your product catalog that you're using Oracle Java. Um, we see that your, one of your developers downloaded a copy one time, and now uh, uh, you're using it in a, on a much wider basis than, than that license permits. Um, and that's made its way into the press. You know, Oracle finally targets Java non payers six years after plugging some. Thought Java was free, think again, and US dollars in, in, in 2017. So that's Oracle. Um, SAP, indirect usage time bomb. Um, Deirdre will, will, will come and, and, and go through the case um, with, with Diageo. Um, everyone will probably be familiar with the Business Software Alliance, which is a grouping of the major software vendors who, for 20 odd years now, have had a campaign against under licensing. Um, and uh, they've had uh, uh, campaigns in 2015 and 2016 where they have been writing routinely to many businesses. In 2016, they targeted London companies. Um, and, and sort of how this happens. Um, is that there can be a, 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 a change of use. Uh, a comp we've had recent experience of a PLC which uh, 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 divested, to maintained a 49% stake in a company that it previously had 75% uh, of. Um, and one of the big ERP vendors came and said, well, it's no longer a subsidiary. You owe us lots of money. And you know, the, the, the difference could have been between 50% you know, of one share and 50%. Um, and they've got their, their, the bit between their teeth on, on, on this at the moment. So uh, how soft, however deployment comes to light, uh, in many cases it's, it's someone making a call to the support desk of the vendor. The vendor then goes into its records and they tend to keep good records and they find that the only record that they have of the company having taken the license of their product is a sort of single user development license. The support request comes around because there is a product using this software in the field, so it's obviously being used commercially. Um, and the support desk then tracks back to the business. The business says, well, you know, we can't map your use against what the license was. Um, so, you know, we think we, we've had a look at this and, 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 and you know, we're very happy that you're using our software, but obviously there's going to be a cost because it's on an enterprise-wide enterprise basis or it's using the cloud or whatever. Um, so, so, so that's a classic way for these over-deployment issues to come to light. Um, uh, uh, and, and a new product launch. Um, you know, a, 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 a company will perhaps put its new product catalog up on the website or it will be marketing um, a new product launch saying we're, 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 we're going into a little bit more detail about the innovative way in which it's using its software stack. And part of the component of the software stack will be this uh, our product that, 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 uh, that, that, that the license or things, things that's been under licensed. So there are, there are uh, uh, lots of ways in which over-deployment can come to light. Um, and all goes to this point that, that, that at the moment, um, everything we see is that the software vendors are becoming uh, much more aggressive uh, in the way that they uh, uh, seek to, to, to assert their licenses.